everything in the media the past two weeks has been the impeachment of the former Embo governor, Nyaga Wamora. But what exactly is impeachment? What is the process of impeachment, in fact? Are we joined in the studio by the person who supervises the implementation of our constitution uh, to elaborate more on the process of impeachment and the drama around the impeachment of Governor Wambora. Uh, Charles Nichai is the chairman of the Constitution Implementation Commission. Uh, he joins us together with Mtengi Njao, uh, senior editor and resident uh, analyst here. Uh, Charles, uh, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Before we get to impeachment, how is the implementation of the Constitution growing? Well, um, uh, generally speaking, I think the, the, the implementation of the Constitution, uh, if we were to divide it, uh, there is, there is uh, the technical part, uh, which I would say we've done fairly well. When I say technical, I'm talking about uh, uh, putting in place the laws uh, that are required to implement the Constitution, the administrative procedures, the development of policies. Uh, all that, uh, uh, I think, both in terms of uh, the laws that are specifically required under the fifth schedule and in terms of other laws to ensure that that, that is consistent with the Constitution. That, we think, has gone uh, uh, and is going uh, uh, fairly well. Now, there, there, then there, there is the, the, the what one might call the soft uh, uh, aspects, which are, are probably more important of implementing the Constitution, uh, developing a culture of constitutionalism. Uh, those uh, who have been given uh, uh, offices and uh, organs established by the Constitution uh, and understanding their mandates and uh, respecting the mandates of others, uh, and institutions generally uh, uh, working and complementing uh, each, each other. other. Uh, that I think we we, we, we have still got uh, 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 some need to, to go. And then thirdly, of course, right now, uh, since the, the elections of March last year, the principal focus of implementation of the Constitution uh, is devolution. Now, devolution has uh, come with a whole uh, host of challenges, some predictable uh, and, and, and therefore, you know, uh, 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 arising just from the nature of, of that uh, radical shift and from the nature of change generally, and, yes. and they can be addressed as such. Yeah. But uh, others, uh, again, uh, relating to, to institutions and those who occupy those offices, and, and uh, getting everybody, one, to have a common understanding of devolution, and uh, uh, two, uh, to, to again, to ensure that all the uh, institutions and organs which are necessary uh, to make devolution work, that they all complement each other. I and mean, mm. here we're talking about uh, pretty much every uh, organ. We're talking about the national executive. We're talking about the, the, the two houses of parliament. We're talking about uh, the, the, the county governments as a whole. And then when you come to the county government, you're talking about the two arms of the county governments. Uh, and, and there are a number of challenges, yeah. especially is, is, in the filing of... Yeah. Of, of is the public sufficiently sensitized about the laws which are being passed? Because a lot of challenges are coming in in terms of um, implementation or enforcement, a lot of conflict arising from interpretation really. In fact, the gist of our discussion today is about understanding the law, mm. so to speak. Is the public with it? No, I, I think the, the, the honest answer to that is that no. One, one thing in this whole process that as a country uh, we simply did not get right is, is um, uh, civic education and empowering the citizen uh, to understand the constitution, to internalize the constitution, and to, to do uh, uh, what is very important in terms of the constitution, that is to participate participate yes. in the process of implementation. So we, we, we are all, everybody is having to try, trying to do that as we go along, as we do the actual implementation. So on that, again, uh, I would accept that we haven't met. As it well. looks as if there's no mutual respect between the various institutions. That's the, 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 the holders, uh, either the holders, the, the problem is the holders of, mm. of the office, as you pointed out, mm. or general thinking that supremacy was, which, which, is, which is not useful at all. Well, one of the things I keep saying, uh, Mutegi, is that uh, uh, the framers of our constitution, uh, and, and indeed I think the framers of any constitution uh, uh, make certain assumptions. Uh, two of those assumptions are, one, that the those who are given uh, uh, mandates by the constitution and those who, who are given roles by the constitution uh, will be reasonable 
yeah, in, in the way they discharge uh, those responsibilities. And number two, that they will charge those, they will discharge those responsibilities uh, for the benefit of the people, or in this case, uh, the people of Kenya. Now, it is because that is not always the case that then we, we then have problems of uh, uh, tough wars tough wars we, we have uh, sometimes what appear to be uh, ego problems either between institutions or between uh, 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 in, in, in individuals and that of course tends to affect the, the, the process of the implementation Isn't that a crisis right now in this country? Because if you look at the three arms of government there seems to be real friction between the judiciary the legislature, the judiciary, the executive you know, and sometimes uh, even the executive of the legislature in terms of uh, their mandate, their tough. Yeah. Uh, you had the speaker the other day, Justin Turi, mm. really affirming the, <laughs> the position and the territory of the legislature uh, from an encroachment uh, by the judiciary, so to speak. You don't want to take uh, uh, court uh, uh, decisions. Yeah, I think, I think uh, David, what, what, what is, uh, uh, is or could be a major crisis in this country, in my view, the, 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 the biggest potential crisis that we have in this country is what is uh, developing or uh, uh, seeming to be uh, a trend mm. uh, uh, which is essentially a, a, a failure, a refusal to, um, uh, to accept the principle of the rule of law. Now, the principle of the rule of law uh, uh, and it is it is a, a national uh, principle that is uh, uh, in the constitution. In the constitution in, in right. Article 10 requires uh, the example that you have given uh, requires, for example, that if you look at the constitution, uh, th there is something which which we we keep forgetting that ultimately this constitution itself provides uh, a mechanism uh, for its own interpretation. Right. And it's very clear, if you look at Article uh, uh, 165 on any issue that relates to the, the interpretation of the Constitution or on, on, on an issue of uh, anything that is done in the name of the Constitution, ultimately, the subject to the appellate process, the, the High Court has that jurisdiction to make that determination. So, the crisis is when you get institutions such as uh, 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 Parliament uh, saying, sometimes in so many words that, you know, uh, uh, court orders are, are, are either no application to them.